Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Olson, and this is Milk and Cookies Painting. I grew up admiring Bob Ross. He's one of my favorite painters, favorite people. His soft, from his soft-spoken voice to his luscious curls. So today is all about you, Bob. Uh, we're dedicating this episode to Mr. Bob Ross. So, as many of you know, I paint in acrylics, which is a little different than Bob. I like oils, but acrylics are more my thing. So today, I thought I'd show you how to paint a nice little beach scene. Maybe we'll call it a happy little beach scene. If you'd like to paint along, feel free to at your own pace. For today's episode, you'll need ochre yellow, lamp black, turquoise, cobalt blue, and some titanium white. You can purchase these at any craft store, but I recommend buying uh, some good quality heavy bodied acrylics where you can find them. I like to buy my acrylics from uh, Jerry's Artorama. There's a Creative Inspirations brand that I really love, and also from Michael's, I like their Artist Loft brand. All right, then what you're gonna need is three brushes. You'll need a three-quarter inch brush, a half inch brush, and a pointed brush. Um, I love these three sizes. You can get all kinds of different brushes if you want, but I like to stick with these three. With uh, acrylic painting, you really just need the acrylic and a little tiny bit of water, some brushes, and something to paint on. So today we've got our gallery wrapped canvas. I'm going to go ahead and paint on it uh, landscape for you. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dunk the brush in the water a little bit and dry it off on the towel. Just loosening up those bristles so that uh, the paint will, will adhere to them. Then I'm going to do what's called sharpening the brush. I'm going to go ahead and tap the brush into the paint on both sides. Now what that does is that makes a nice sharp edge on the side of that. See that nice sharp edge? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we've got a little bit of cobalt blue. We're gonna come down, oh, about halfway and rest our brush on there at a 45 degree angle. And then we're just gonna pull that brush all the way across the canvas. Something therapeutic about that. So we'll go ahead and put a little more paint in there and tighten up that line. Today I've got my canvas up on a little easel. You can paint on an easel if you want to, or if you don't have one at home, you can go ahead and just paint right on top of the table. You can stand when you paint or sit when you paint. It doesn't really matter. Whatever makes you the most comfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and, and tighten that line up one more time. I'm going to pull it across the canvas here. And I'm going to paint the two sides. We like to present a finished painting every time. So this, this canvas uh, is just a stapled back gallery wrap canvas. It's been pre-gessoed, but we've allowed that gesso to dry. We just bought them from Hobby Lobby. And Hobby Lobby's great because they have really great prices. Everybody else is just a little bit more expensive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start now at the top and just start coating my canvas. Just start getting some paint on there. Sometimes you just got to dive in. get some paint on the canvas and then we can start blending some of those other colors in there. Alright, so if you've been watching at home and been saying, hey you haven't covered all the canvas yet, you're right. Sometimes you have to go over a few spots just to get the canvas all covered. 
and you want nice long even strokes across the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this side and paint up the side here so we get our canvas covered. Now I've been a little bit sloppy with this line. I can go ahead and, and tighten that up whenever I like just by sharpening the brush and pulling that gently across the canvas if I need to. That's pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give some depth to the sky. So I've still got some paint in my brush. That doesn't matter too much. I'm going to go ahead and dip into this titanium white on both sides. Now, now you can see it's kind of messy, but it's kind of blended in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put that across the canvas and just start painting. So as you can see, as I am going across the canvas, it's starting to blend that blue into the background. We want something interesting to look at in our sky and the more you uh, brush over a certain spot the more it will blend into the color of the back. If you want a nice um, bright paint color you're going to want to uh, brush it on and then leave it. If you uh, if you go over and over in it or if you go over and over it it will blend into the color behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and just wipe out this brush a little bit. It's had a little too much paint in it. Then I'm going to go ahead with kind of a dry brush here and just kind of go around the edges here and pull some of that paint around the edge and blend that paint in. I'm going to go ahead and do that on this other side so we're all kinds of even. Not just one or two kinds. Okay. Now just to make sure we're even, I'm going to go ahead and go back over it with the dry brush. All right. So now that we've got part of our sky in, I'm going to talk a little bit about acrylic paint. Now if you've never used acrylic paint before, acrylic paint is really nice because it dries fairly quickly. You don't have to treat it, you don't have to put any chemicals in it. Uh, unlike oil paint, it can kind of stand on its own. Um, you don't need linseed oil or anything to mix into it. With acrylic paint, it dries fast. Uh, if we paint and we don't like what we have, we can go ahead and wait for a few minutes and then paint right over top of it like it never happened. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tap into this turquoise. I've cleaned my brush off and we're jumping into the turquoise paint. I'm going to go ahead and pull that across the canvas across that line and jump back into it and I'm going to now bring oh, looks like I didn't quite get enough paint on the brush so let's go back again get some good paint on there there we are and I'm going to go ahead and quickly put in where my ocean is going to be. Okay. It doesn't necessarily need to be super even on the bottom. Sometimes we have little areas that are of the beach where the waves are coming in on the sand and they can be just a little bit uneven. We do want to remember to go around those edges and we want nice long strokes with the brush so we can get that 
ocean in there. All right, well, let me go ahead and paint this other side real quick. And now we have kind of an ocean blocked in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this brush once to clean it out. We don't just dip it in and stir it around because that'll make a mess of our water. It'll make muddy water. If you do need to clean it out, all you got to do is dunk it once in the water, take that paper towel, and pull all of that extra paint off of there. Be sure you have lots of paper towels for acrylic painting. It can make a mess. That's part of the fun of it, though. All right. So, now that our brush is fairly clean, I'm going to go ahead and dunk it and clean it one more time, just to try and get some of that blue paint out of there. Now, blue is kind of a stronger paint, uh, or it's got a pigment in it that's really strong, and it can sometimes stain the bristles of the brush. That's okay, as long as there isn't huge caked up paint in the brush. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the three quarter inch brush down now. I'm going to switch brushes real quick over to a half inch brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what's going on with my beach here. Are we going to do, have a straight view at it or maybe a three quarter inch view or three quarter view? I, I kind of like a straight view. Let's, let's go ahead and, and dip some of that yellow ochre, that brush into the yellow ochre. And then we'll go ahead and steal some of this titanium white. And we're going to brighten up that yellow ochre. We want a nice sandy beach color. So I'm going to add quite a bit of titanium white. You want to do this for a couple reasons. You want to add a lot of white so that when you're spreading this color around that you have enough to cover the canvas. But also, um, that white will blend in really well with this yellow ochre and it will give you a nice uh, sandy color like that. So now that I've got some color on my brush, I'm going to do something crazy here. I'm going to go ahead and flip my painting over. That way I can paint the bottom of it, which is now the top. So first thing, I'm going to coat the very top here. Don't worry if you get a little paint on your easel, that's okay. Okay, let's go ahead and throw some of that paint in there. It's a pretty good color. I'm, I'm liking this sand color. It's looking... Alright, we're going to continue on here. We've got a little more paint on our brush. And we're going to go ahead and paint down the sides and across the front here. The reason I switched down from the three quarter inch brush, which is what we like to call our large brush, but the, the reason why we switched down from the three quarter inch brush is because uh, that three quarter inch brush, the big brush, has a little bit of blue in it. And I didn't really want to mix the blue and this nice white tan we've got going on. So I'm not going to. So I'm going to switch down brushes and not, not take a chance on it until I get down to this turquoise. Now, it looks like I've used up all of my color, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little more white and mix that up. Like I said before, sometimes you need to mix more than you'll think you'll need so you can get the correct amount of coverage. Okay, so I've got quite a bit of paint on this brush. I'm going to go ahead and just try not to get too much of that blue in here. I want this to be a nice pristine beach as much as I possibly can. And we're going to Come right down close to that edge and then just give that a minute to dry. All 
All right, so I'm going to just touch up this edge here real quick. And then any spots that I have left over. Got a little turquoise in there. I'm going to just get that out here. And then we'll continue painting around that side. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paint the other side real quick, just to make sure we have a full painted canvas. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clean out that brush. We'll go ahead and dunk it and get some of that paint out of there. We don't want a brush that's caked in paint or it doesn't work as well. When you have a lot of paint on there, it tends to get in between the bristles and it's not as sharp, it's not as uh, useful of a tool, these paint brushes. These paint brushes uh, also came from Jerry's Artorama and I really like them. They're, they're plastic. A lot of the brushes out there, well, just like this, have wooden handles and they're kind of cheap because they, they give them a coat of paint but after about six or seven uses and you wash them and you let them dry, the paint on these starts to crack and it gets really annoying when you have brushes with handles with cracked paint on them. It's just not, not a nice feeling. So if you're going to buy brushes, I would recommend short handled brushes and uh, specifically this brand, the Dura Handle uh, from Jerry's Artorama. Uh, so now that promo time is over, let's jump back into this painting. So now that I have got, I've got the bottom of this painted, I'm going to jump back in here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of a phyllo blue, phyllo, phyllo, however you say it. I'm going to add a little bit of phyllo blue. It's a little bit of a darker blue, and I'll tell you why. Uh, phyllo blue is nice. It's a little bit of a contrast from this cobalt. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but uh, you can see the, the difference. When we go ahead and, and sharpen our brush on both sides, and again I'm using that uh, half inch brush, and, and you can see how nice and dark that color is, how sharp that brush is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and drag it across the horizon line, so as close as I possibly can. So give it a little, a little bit of depth, a little bit of uh, something to bite into. So you can definitely see where the horizon and the ocean are separate. I'm going to go ahead and right now it looks a little scraggly. I'm going to go ahead and come back over there. And again, just like the white, if you want this to fade in in a few places, which I recommend. You're going to go ahead and just kind of use up that paint until it's all out of the brush. And if it's too dark, you just keep going over that spot until it behaves. So we're going to go ahead and get that edge real quick. And this edge over here so we don't forget them. And then we're going to Keep brushing that phyllo blue, phyllo blue. You can tell me in the comments if you think I'm saying it wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and paint some of that down into this turquoise. And if you can see, now we have a little bit of depth of color. Looks like there's a little bit of difference there in the, in the water and in the sky. Now, the perfectionist, the OCD in me, wants me to go ahead and fix this line. So I'm going to do that right now. 
So we're going to go ahead and carefully paint a line. Across the top there. Good. And as the water gets closer to us, it gets just a little lighter. And then you do want a couple of spots that are lighter and a couple that are darker. Now it looks like it's alive. It looks like it's it's got some some guts to it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and clean off this brush one more time, and I'm going to start I'm going to dunk it in the water and clean off that brush. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and dip into my titanium white. I'm going to get some of that and put it off to the side here. The reason I want some of that is because we're going to start working on this little area of the beach that the waves are coming in on the sand. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of drag that across the line where our sand and water separate. and just paint in a couple of spots. Sometimes the beach, the, the tide comes in and it brings that nice white froth on it. So if you want that, you get a lot of paint on your brush and I like to hold it at a 45 degree, well, kind of a, a perpendicular to the canvas. Uh, and I just take that and just drag it across and, you know, I get about that far, and then I'm out of paint. So I need to flip my brush over again. And just drag it a little bit more. I'm going to go back for white paint probably three or four more times before I'll be happy with the level of white that I have on the canvas. So one thing this method kind of does, too, is it forces a little bit of randomness into your painting. You don't have quite the control that you always have with painting. Now, like I said before, if you want this to be a stark white, you just leave it. If you want that to blend into the blue, then you just keep going over it until it blends in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more white and I've, you see I've got it on the one side this time I'm just gonna touch and drag and this will start to look like little wave crests happy little waves Okay, now we've got a little little more paint on the brush there. So I'm gonna just back in here just throw a couple of little, little crested waves. So it looks like that tide is coming in. Have to have somewhere for it to go, I guess. It's coming in and going out. You better just hope it wiped its feet first. There. I'm pretty happy with, with the way my waves are looking. Let's turn our attention to the sky a little bit. So of course, in true Bob Ross fashion, we gotta have some happy little clouds in here. So I think uh, we're gonna start about here 
and start almost perpendicular to the canvas but just at a slight angle and you're just gonna pull your brush across the canvas and you're gonna let it touch the canvas in a few places as you're going. I don't want to overdo this. So then you can take and build up a couple of nice cloud shapes. I'm taking that brush and I'm just again just no more paint added to that brush. I'm just making little kind of rainbow shapes on there. And you can work those clouds till the paint starts to run dry, but then you got to move on. Otherwise, uh, your cloud is just going to fade back into the background like the rest of us. But uh, I have a little more titanium white on here, so I'm going to go ahead and come back over the front part of this and then go around the edge so that we have a cloud that doesn't look like it just disappears into the ether on the other side of the canvas. So I'm pretty happy with the way that cloud is looking. Maybe we'll give it just a little more, a couple more strokes. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on this other canvas, or other cloud over here. And this one's going to be a big, bright, billowy cloud. And again, we're just taking that brush and doing little, almost circle shapes. Sometimes if you get through the paint, uh, it'll start to bleed blue through. And then, of course, we're going to want to go around the side of that canvas and make sure that we don't pick up too much paint from the side of the canvas. So I'm going to wipe that side off, and we're going to pull this paint back around the side here. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit more titanium white on my palette. Looks like I have done a number to this thing. Looks like I'm almost out of white, so I'm going to go ahead and snag a little bit more. Uh, Michael sells these pump bottles, and I really like them because there's enough paint that you can paint a lot of paintings, but uh, you all you have to do is pump that, and you get some nice fresh paint on there. You don't have to worry about squeezing the tube or getting the last little bit out of there. It's really nice. The pump feature. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and wash out my brush a little bit. It's looking a little bit like it's got too much paint in it again, which happens from time to time. The little rascal. Alright. I'm going to dive back into the white on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and just sharpen that brush on the edge so I don't get any blue in there. Uh, today you'll notice I'm using a styrofoam plate as a palette. These are very expensive and very hard to find. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can buy these at any dollar store and that's why I like them because they're cheap and they're a good alternative to buying an expensive palette that you don't need and you have to clean. And Anyway, I like these a lot better. But you can paint on whatever surface you'd like using whatever kind of palette you want. That's the beauty of painting. So now that this has had just a second to start to dry, I can get the layers of paint on there and what I don't want is to be able to see brush strokes here. I want to be able to see just that nice white mixing in with the blue a little bit. Yeah, I 
I'm going to go ahead and take the brush at the very end right across the bottom of these clouds just to kind of give it a nice little got a little too much paint there. And you can take paint off same way you put it on you just get a dry brush and you can pull that paint right off the canvas. There. Cool, we've got a nice little beachscape going. Let's go ahead and add maybe a, a couple of rocks out there in the in the ocean here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll put get our black paint. Go ahead and get some of that on here. Now be so careful with black paint. Black paint ruins more paintings than any other paint there is out there. And it's easy to take much more than you need. You just need a little tiny bit. A little goes a long way. Okay, so I'm going to decide that I want a little rock. It's going to start here and it's going to come up out of the water, come back down in the water, and I'm just going to fill that in right there. Then I'm going to take and sharpen my brush in, in that uh, pre-sharpened spot on my palette. And I'm going to say I want kind of an almost an archway. So I'm going to take this here and bring it back down. And you may look at that and think, oh no, he's ruining it. He's ruining it. Nope. Just wait. You'll see. You'll see what I'm going for. And maybe I will ruin it. Who knows? So I'm going to go ahead and build up. rock right there. And I'm going to add a little geometry to this by sharpening that. I'll go ahead and bring that up like that. And then I'm going to make it a little more top heavy here. Flatten it off where it runs into the water. And these two need to be about the same depth because that's where they meet the water. It's right about here. There. Feeling pretty good about that little arch. Um, maybe we'll need to darken in a few spots where the paint didn't quite cover. We'll go ahead and touch that up right now. And then there's a couple of spots where the paint brush made kind of a little rough patch. I'm going to try and square those off as much as I possibly can. Now I'm here in Utah and we don't have a lot of beaches in Utah. We do have Delicate Arch though, and uh, this is starting to look a little bit like Delicate Arch. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit of rock out of the water there. Just so that it doesn't quite look like Delicate Arch. And I'm going to add maybe a couple little rocks over here. This one will be near the horizon line. And it's a big rock. You know what? Maybe we'll make that come all the way off the canvas. It'll be a big mountainous rock. 
whatever we do, we just have to be consistent and bring it all the way around that edge. I'm try and give that a little point. So I'm going to go ahead and sharpen up my brush again. That's the beauty about sharpening your brush is it gives you those nice two points. So if you're trying to paint something in a straight line, you have that little sharp point and then once that starts to wear down and round off on the brush, you can just flip the brush over and use the other pointed side, which is kind of nice. Okay, and this rock needs a little bit of filling in. There we go. All right, let's get some of that black paint off of the brush. We don't want to mess this thing up any more than we have to. Okay, so now we can add a few more details. Now we've got kind of the base of the painting in. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to switch down to my small pointed brush. This will allow me to kind of get in some of those little cracks and to do some smaller lines. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the titanium white with this small brush. And the way you sharpen a small brush is you drag it through the paint and you kind of twist it so that it gets this nice point to it. Now if you just kind of rest on the top of the canvas, you can kind of add, let's see, maybe that was not enough paint there. I'm going to go ahead and switch sides here. And we'll show you. So you just take the brush, and you start making these little tiny lines. Maybe we're going to build up that wave a little bit. Now, where the surf is hitting those rocks, you're going to go ahead and just put a little bit of splashing where the Just right across the bottom here. Maybe there's a little splash right there. Then we're going to go ahead and start painting around the bottom of that rock here. And again on this side. Now because this black paint is still wet, it's picking up some of that white paint and turning it gray a little bit. That's okay. But we will want to clean off the black when we're ready to put more white paint in the brush. Okay, so I'm going to continue to add just a little, a little shoreline over here. Maybe that rock comes down just a little bit into our view. And we'll paint off the other edge there. Alright guys, so for our last few steps, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get just a little bit more of that titanium white in my small brush and just touch up a few of these areas that turned gray and you don't want it to look too manicured you have waves that just kind of do whatever they want and you don't want to have spots that are, look like they're paint too, painted too much okay now I'm going to go ahead and again take some more of this white and sharpen down the brush and I'm going to add a few more details to the waves. Go 
going back each time to sharpen that brush with white. And these little tiny details, they seem a little bit tedious, but they're pretty important to getting a realistic looking piece. You can overwork this too, which I've done in the past, but you got to learn from your mistakes and keep on trying. With each painting, it'll get better and better. Thicken up this wave right here. There. Sometimes when there's already thick paint on there, you need to get even more paint on the brush so it doesn't pull that paint off the right off the brush. Let me bring that white in just a little bit. Beaches tend to have spots where the ocean and the sand meet and it has a little bit of a blue hue to it, but you can see the that ocean foam happening on the beach. There. A little bit more this way. And then we'll make sure it wraps around the corner and tuck it in tight. Now you need a nice tight point for some of these. Sometimes if you need to clean your brush out, make sure it's nice and pointed so that when you drag it across the surface here, you get what you want. Feeling pretty good about this. Let's just add just a little more down to the bottom of these rocks. So now we're just going to add a few last minute touches here.
Sometimes when you've painted some of those white waves, as they dry, they'll blend in. So sometimes you have to go back over them. And let's do a little bit of sea foam on each side of that. Let's call that good. So now what we're going to do is I've got a little white paint. I'm going to go ahead and dip it just a little bit into the black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on this rock with that mixture of paint. And I don't want to get everywhere on the rock, but I do want to give this a little bit of a texture so that it looks more like a rock and not like a black paint blob with an arch through the middle of it. I'm going to go ahead and keep tapping on that. Now, as I said, black is very dominant color, so as, as I dipped into the black, you can see that black is starting to overtake the white again. So, you need both, so I've got uh, more white in there, and if I keep tapping, then it's going to go ahead and fade into a black. And that's looking a little too gray. I want a couple of spots of dark in here. Like my good buddy Bob Ross says, you need the dark and the light to work together to kind of create that illusion. If you have too much dark, then people don't believe that it's a rock. But if, once you add a little bit of that white, then you can start to your mind starts to make little areas that are in that rock. And you just paint until you feel like it's done. And maybe this is too much white down here. Maybe we'll add a little bit of black down there. goes a long way. All right, and maybe that looks too much like brush strokes, so we'll just come in here every once in a while and make sure we don't have things that look like brush strokes. We want this to look natural and like it's just some spot that you see out on the ocean. I'm going to go ahead and do this same treatment to these other two rocks real quick. Not too much black. We'll add a little white to that. Yeah, we'll do that a little bit over there. Yeah, a little more black to that one. I feel like that one kind of got overpowered a little bit. Just the white. And sometimes you have to go back and forth till you get something you like. Sometimes it works real well the first time. Sometimes you have to just keep working at it. clean the majority of that black out and we'll dip our brush and like I said black is a strong color so we have to rinse it a couple of times and then put a lot of white in if we're back to white Okay, now the reason I'm putting a few more white lines in front of here is because that water will rush in and then it'll rush back and slap against those rocks. And there's a few higher spots in here. Maybe that will 
hit pretty hard and splash just a little bit. There. Okay, now one more quick couple of spots on here. Now, last thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of this yellow ochre with my small brush after I've cleaned it out. Eh, maybe that was a little too much, so I'll sharpen it on there just to get some of it out. And now I'm going to put a couple of spots on the rock. There's all kinds of little sea life and lichens and moss and stuff that is on here and so you're going to want a little bit of color in here if you, everything's just black and white that's boring you need a little bit of a little bit of color down by the bottom here especially now remember what i said if if you're going to paint on top of another color, you got to go a little bit thicker. That's maybe too thick. <laughs> Let's use what we got here. And we'll bring some of that color up into here. We don't want it to look too composed. We'll put a couple little spots on this one. And just one or two little tiny spots on this one. Yeah. I don't like that except for this one little spot here. It's just got a little too much paint on it. And I'm, I'm showing you this mostly because I screwed up, but also because I want you to see that it's, it's pretty easy to fix your mistakes. I've just gone over with a little bit of the white paint, a little bit of black paint in there. You can fix just about anything. All right. Well, I hope you had fun painting with us today. We're going to call this one done. So the last thing I do on my paintings is I usually sign them in the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I usually just put my initials, which are J-O. You can sign these any way you like. I've seen people put first names, last names. I've seen people do a heart. I've seen people do thumbprints on them. Um, you can do just about anything that you like. Let's fix that right there. Perfect. Now, again, thanks for painting with us. I'm Jeff Olson. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it, share, and please subscribe. We love when people subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, in the comments below, tell me how I did. What do you think? And from me to you, and Bob, wherever you are, God bless and happy painting.